Hi, it's Tony from Cassette Comeback and welcome to day seven of seven cassettes in seven days. And we've kept this one to last and it is the Agfa FEI S Superferral HDX. And this one comes from the 82 to 85 range. So high precision mechanism, Superferral. So yeah, Agfa expecting good things. I, I did another video on Agfa, but um, towards the end, I think Agfa seem to outsource their cassettes to here, there and everywhere as that video shows. But in this stage, I think they still made their own tape, still made their own shells and they were still making cassettes for other people as well. Cause I remember quite a few like the Dixon's brown ones were rebanded, uh, rebanded, rebranded Agfa. So yeah, this should be a good cassette. So I like the, uh, I like the pattern. It reminds me of like early Sega Mega Drive Genesis games was the black and gray grid pattern. But anyway, uh, let's have a look on the back. So it says it's IEC one. It's uh, yeah. Okay. And we've got this graph, which did, did anyone in the time actually care about them? Did, did, does anyone now care about them? No, me neither. Uh, and there's all the stats, the moles and the souls and the sensitivity and the frequency. Yeah. Yeah. What I mean, at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. Put it in there, record it. It sounds good. It sounds bad. One of the two. There we go. So as you can see, it is sealed this, but it's, um, it's been damaged a bit. So I hope that the elements haven't got to it. Very distinctive tears on, on that for rappers, very distinctive feel and tears. It, yeah. You, can you see it's like that? It, it tears very straight and it's that sort of like serrated tear. And that's when you can tell if a cassette was made by Agfa, because like I say, the, the Dixon's cassettes tore this way as well. So very distinctive, but underneath it, that looks better. So let's have a look what it says. High density iron oxide optimal on all recorders, particularly on international and in, in international hi-fi decks at the 120 micro second setting international hi-fi decks. So maybe it means this is going to work well in Japanese decks. Who, who knows? Um, have a look at the cassette itself. Yeah. You know, 82, 85, paper label, but at least got a bit of silver on it, screwed shell. Yeah. The slotted screws as opposed to the Phillips type. Hmm. I'm trying to think where I've seen shells like this before. Yeah. So yeah, this is a pretty standard egg for shell for the time. So yeah, it is what it is. Let's have a see if there's anything more interesting in the J card. No, not really, but uh, it does what it does. So let's have a look at the tape itself. Yeah, so that's uh, get this out of the way so we can focus on the tape so the camera can do that. So yeah, that's uh, pretty dark and it, it does say, you know, that it is a super ferro. So we can imagine there's some cobalt doping going here on here, looking at the blackness of the tape. It's a bit concave, but uh, other than that, yeah, not a hell of a lot else to say. I mean, I just hope that the, uh, the mech's all right in this. Cause I've had some of the earlier Agfa tapes and I've found that the, the, they're very hard to wind and fast forward and the squeak could be that they had the BASF SM mechanisms in them. Maybe they need to be removed, but let's, uh, I'll give this one a fast forward and a rewind first. In fact, one of the things that I do actually use to, to, to see how free flowing or good a mech is, is, is actually this little Nagoka winder, because what I can do is I can spin it really fast on here. And if I start winding it, I can feel how free flowing it is. And if the mechanism isn't particularly stable, this here, because this is just a, a round thing that isn't slotted in. If it starts rubbing against it, it means that it's not particularly stable. And it usually only happens towards the end where, um, is really spinning. So if I just do that and then put it around this way, let's see if it makes any squealing noises as I'm spinning it back. No, that sounds pretty stable. No, that sounds pretty good. Running pretty freely that. So yeah, let's uh, fire up a deck, get it calibrated, record synergy on it and let's see how it sounds.
All right, let's get it biased up. So tip EX120, yeah. Okay, level bias. Whoa, bias is a tad over there. Yeesh. I think this is from trying to trying to think what cassette I was trying to do in this last, was it that? It's probably the EMI, was it? Let's we need to crank that all the way back. There we go. That's that's more acceptable. Okay. Bias is there. Levels mad over now. So the differences in tapes. Right. Now the bias is dropped off loads. Ha ha ha. Ah, it's all good clean fun, right. Okay. Are we all right now? Are we, are we safe? Are we safe? Right, bias, level, azimuth. You said the differences between one tape and another. There we go, all right. Azimuth is on. Level's fine. Bias is fine. Right, good. So, I'm going to record Synergy again, but I'm going to record it, since it's saying it's a super fair, I'm going to have it peaking at around plus five. If sounds all distorted, well, I'll turn it down. So, yeah, let's do it again. Synergy. Well, it, uh, it was sitting at plus five. Yeah, that, that was a very, very good performance. I'm very pleased with that. The truth. I couldn't help but notice that even though, you know, I don't charge for Patreon, I don't ask you to buy anything, there's no affiliate links, there's no buy me a coffee stuff, that 
less than well around one percent of you bother clicking the like button for watching the video so you've been here for most of this video now so you must have liked it so far so can you do me a favor and click the like button because it actually really does help the channel go on i'm i'm, I'm not going to be doing anything i'm just going to be uh well oh, i don't know re rewinding this cassette a little bit on on this winder so go on go away go on go and press the like button it'll take you a whole half a second hopefully you done it all right super duper thank you very much and we have it rewound so the agfa feis super ferro yes this is a super ferric i mean the whole point of super ferrics is that you can run them well record them really hot so that means that you need to use less volume in playing them back which means that you get to hear less hiss but because the cobalt doped that inherently adds more hiss which sort of makes it counterintuitive but i think the, the big problem with super ferrics is, is that it's it's a nomenclature they're a normal position cassette so why would you pay a premium for a normal position cassette when you could buy a type 2 which isn't normal you know this is normal so why am i paying so much for a normal cassette and that's why i think that super ferrix are one of the rarest types of cassettes they're really not common at all because i don't think they sold many but you know listening to that playback there yeah the mids were a bit lacking a bit, a bit lacking in the mids but the 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 treble really did seem enhanced it didn't have a roll off it seemed like it had an enhanced treble to me but like i say that's me listening directly from the headphone socket of the cassette deck live and not having it you know processed when i get turned it into an mp4 when i'm putting the video together for it then to be uploaded to youtube for it to be processed again your mileage may vary but from where i was sitting with my headphones on it sounded like it, it had enhanced treble so yeah it's a nice looking retro cassette solid shell good tape in it recorded really well yeah that was about what i was expecting performance wise so yeah i'm really happy with that one and act for itself was one of the main european manufacturers of tape you know the oem for a lot of people they made their own tape they made their own chrome and then as cassette started dying off they just outsourced it to other people icm was some one that made them but icm i think used a lot of agfa tape in their cassettes to begin with it's all complicated and boring for a lot of people but yeah agfa good gear and uh, yeah not not particularly easy to find outside of europe but great cassette so that's the last one of seven cassettes in seven days so let's have a sum up then shall we let's rank these in order seven to one well it's going to be eight to one because there's technically eight cassettes even though two were were the same so in eighth position i'm going to put the emi xt because well um you know it looked good it's british and everything but it really did need a lot a lot of uh, biasing you know negative bias and level calibration to make it sound decent and it wouldn't have sounded good on a, a fixed bias cassette deck so that goes there so in the next position i'm going to put the james york now technically i know the emi sounded better than the james york but i'm giving the james york some slack by probably being at least 10 years older than the emi and it, you know it just about made an acceptable recording we don't know how storage has played into it but it is an old tape but again for a tape that was probably made in the mid 70s it, it, it sounded okay you know it's, it didn't sound like a type zero so i'm going to give that a pass and say i, I prefer that to the emi xt next cassette is going to be the the new formula yashima um it was all right it was all right it was a decent enough cassette but it wasn't spectacular in any way shape or form but again for late 70s early 80s cassette i thought it acquitted itself better than the james york and the AMI XT because it didn't need quite so much tweaking to get a decent sound out of it. Next cassette is going to be the Memorex MRXIS. Now I know this is super ferric, and yes, I do really like this cassette, but on the whole, you know, it did have roll off at the top end, uh, and it wasn't as good as some of the other cassettes that we've tested here. So this one I'm going to put into fourth place 
next one is the Sony Premium EF. Not a lot to say, a very competent cassette, easy to calibrate, sounded well, and like I said in the video, Sony, I've, I've not had bad cassettes from Sony's, even though these are kind of bits of cassettes, you know, the the low end Sony's were bits of meaning, bits of this and bits of that. You never knew what tape was going to be in them. This one was really good. Maybe another one out of a different batch had different taping, not as good. But in this particular case, I'm going to put that one here. Next cassette is going to be the original were formulation. We can't, we're running out of space. The original formulation Yashima UFO. Basically, because I was really surprised by this. Very dark tape. It calibrated easy and it sounded really, really good. I preferred this formula to the newer formula, which is this one. I really did. I thought this was really good. More importantly, it's up there because it was really surprising. It really surprised me, this cassette. Spectrum Type Zero, way, but it wasn't. There we go. That was always going to happen. Always going to happen. Let's put them back there again. There we go. Right. Final place, well, next final place, uh, the Agfa was just tested for the reason I've just said. It's a Super Ferro, looks great, sounds great, dead dependable. Yeah, really good tape. And then, as you could probably guess, in first place, the XL Normal 90. A cassette that looks like a Type 2, could be recorded as a Type 2, but recorded as a Type 1 was a genuine Super Ferric, brilliant performance, easy to calibrate, and yes, just a, a fabulous all-round cassette, especially considering I wasn't expecting much of it, because it's a late cassette from a brand I've never heard of, but yeah, it completely surpassed my expectations, and that's why that one goes into the top slot. So that's been seven cassettes in seven days, even though there's eight of them here. So I want to thank Paul again for sending these in. Very, very much appreciated, Paul. Thank you very much. I hope you got the little Brucey bonuses I've sent you back with the last cassette. So, um, yeah, a bit of reciprocation there. But, yeah, I've enjoyed doing that. Now, just to have a little chat about the channel and stuff, you know, I'm, I'm on... I'm on holiday at the moment, sabbatical, let's say. Mm, yes, I'm, I'm between jobs. So if any of you need a Azure M365 Prince 2, ITIL Certified Solutions Enterprise Architect, who's currently working on his TOLGAF, uh, you let me know, I'm available. But anyhow, so yeah, it was fun doing these, but you know, hopefully I won't be too long without a job. So we'll, uh, we'll, I'm gonna have to crank down the amount of videos I do but while I'm on sabbatical I'll try and crank out some more because I found a, a couple of other cassettes that I'm sure you guys would like me to have a look at for you but other than that thanks for watching happy taping bye bye bing bong scooby dee doo beep dee dee bing bong scooby dee doo beep dee dee yeah try and do a copyright claim on that in five years you bastards